All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started with our American Revolution uh, uh, lecture video. Um, you, you need to understand the dates of the American Revolution. They can be uh, tricky, can be disputed, but really we want to go all the way back to 1765 with the Sugar Act, and we really want to go to 1783 where the treaty is signed. Now, you can even go further than that if you want to go to 1787 when the Constitution is finally signed. Uh, but it's, the, it's again, the, the buildup to the revolution, it's uh, all the stamp acts and, and coercive acts and all the things that led to the revolution and of course the uh, immediate aftermath when we were trying to, to uh, determine how our country would be run and what would be the basis for our country. So you can still see the impacts today. If you pay attention to the news, you'll see that even in Hong Kong, they, they are still echoing the sentiments of our American revolution. Uh, Patrick Henry, give me liberty or give me death. Uh, Hong Kong was a British colony for about 150 years, and in 1997, it was given back to China. And so there's issues even now in Hong Kong. Elections have to be approved by the Chinese government. So they're, they're experiencing a lot of the same sort of uh, uh, problems with their mother country's government that our colonists were experiencing back in the Revolutionary War. Um, they were talking, so it's almost like Hong Kong has this sense of salutary neglect, like, like we did for 100 years plus, and now they're slowly but surely uh, China is trying to impose its will on the small island uh, territory. So when we talk about the American Revolution, there's some advantages to talk about. Nothing really, nothing really uh, extra to write here. Advantages for Americans, well, we've got the home court advantage. We know the terrain, we know the countryside, it's ours, okay? A lot of British don't want a full-scale war against the colonies, um, and the British kind of questioned how they were going to pay for this war. Uh, it was very risky for Britain to send troops um, with so many European enemies close. We're talking, of course, uh, of the French. Uh, some other advantages for the Americans. The British have to bring troops and supplies from across the Atlantic. That's a six-week voyage, and so that's that can be very tricky, uh, a lot of logistical issues to deal with there. Troops were spread very thinly around the world. Uh, and to get them involved in this now conflict with America, a lot of them didn't understand the cause, uh, what was going on here on the colonies that required a military presence. So we talk about the advantages for the British. The first is going to be superior resources. They're the number one empire in the world at the time. They have 9 million people to the colonists 2.5 million. They have a very large stock of war materials, uh, and they have the ability to pr produce even more. Uh, remember, North America is still mostly agrarian. There's some shipbuilding in North Carolina. There is some shipbuilding in the New England colonies. Uh, those are actually for the British uh, military as well. Okay. Other advantages for the British, they had a well-trained and experienced army. They had a very highly centralized government that had a strict chain of command that was followed all the way from the king down to the lowest of the soldiers. And they had a very powerful navy. They were masters of the seas. So you combine the advantages of the British with weaknesses of America, and you've got a problem, okay? Biggest problem, money, short supply. Uh, we talked about earlier uh, some of the acts that the British imposed upon the colonists. They weren't allowed to print their own money. They had to use sort of like trade money, okay? Uh, America could not uh, or did not have the ability to make munitions. Uh, they did eventually make some munitions, but not in the, in the numbers they needed. To get the munitions for the war, they had to steal from British bases in the West Indies. And the French, so nice of them, actually did support the Continental Army at many points during the war. Few proper uniforms for the, the colonial armies. They hated military discipline. Uh, and Washington had to basically create the army from scratch. Uh, another weakness for America, lack of military experience. We talked about the French and Indian War. Uh, they were hated. By the British soldiers, they didn't have a lot of uh, military experience, uh, and they were inefficient and corrupt. Those are major problems with the uh, the American armies. Okay? So British leaders during the war, these are these these leaders had a lot of experience. Uh, Thomas Gage in Massachusetts, remember he's the one that goes after uh, Thomas Jefferson and goes after Sam Adams. Um, William Howe was in New York. Thomas Gage was in Massachusetts. Uh, Henry Clinton was in the South. These are all major military leaders with experience uh, for the British. Again, Thomas Gage in Massachusetts, William Howe in New York, Henry Clinton in the South. So let's talk about the war. Uh, the war, the first battle, the shot heard around the world is, of course, at Lexington and Concord, April 19th, 1775. And after that, the Second Continental Congress meets 
in May of 1775. This is after Lexington and Concord. All 13 colonies were represented. Um, this time, Georgia finally showed up. Of course, Georgia showed up a little bit late. They showed up July 20th uh, after independence had already been declared, but they did show up, so it's important to recognize that. In the Second Continental Congress, John Hancock was chosen president, and we get an established role of the Congress. The role was, number one, they, they called for further protests. We're not, the, we're not meeting to declare war originally, okay? Uh, but the Second Continental Congress did sort of take on the role of a central government for the colonists uh, in the event that war did and eventually did break, up, uh, break out. So they appointed George Washington. That was one of their main goals as commander of the Continental Army. Okay, some other goals. They began negotiations to persuade the king and parliament to change their ways. They actually asked money from France. They did get some money from France under the table. Uh, initially, Fran France did give, secretly gave some supplies to the Continental Army. We talked about lack of munitions and other things. So France is going to be a major ally in the American Revolution. They encouraged the French in Canada to rebel. Uh, they thought that the, the French would, would help in Canada and become a major ally. Okay. There was no real desire for independence early on, even after Lexington and Concord. Most just wanted to appeal to the king and hopefully avoid any conflict that was coming. So why did they choose George Washington? Well, they wanted him for the Continental Army. They thought he had a lot of experience from the French and Indian War. It is important to realize, though, that even in the French and Indian War, his experience was not too great. Uh, in 1755, he led something called the Braddock Expedition. Uh, this was uh, his commander was a man with the last name Braddock. It was the first and largest uh, British expedition versus the French and resulted in about 900 casualties. So uh, very uh, poor defeat uh, back uh, before the American Revolution. Okay. We've already talked about Fort Duquesne, 1758. Uh, it was somewhat successful for Washington. Uh, remember, he was up there really looking uh, out for his own land. Those uh, something like half a million acres. We talked about this when we talked about the French and anywhere. So somewhat successful at Fort Duquesne in 1758. Not too great. The French did uh, eventually retreat them. So political reasons why he was chosen. They needed a southerner. Many of the colonists distrusted northerners. Um, he didn't really need the money. He wasn't seeking fortune. He even served without pay and he was an aristocrat. So he, he was sort of the logical choice to lead the Continental Army. Here's a painting of George Washington taking command of American Army at Cambridge in 1775. Here's another battle we're going to talk about at Fort Ticonderoga in May 10th, 1775. One of the major battles we're going to talk now is Bunker Hill, okay, June 17th, 1775. It's important to know that America lost, but it did gain a lot of confidence. Um, there were a lot of casualties here, a lot on the British side, and it was a confidence booster for the Americans. Um, at this battle, the British were led by Thomas Gage again. William Howe was second in command. Um, this is where you, you'll hear this phrase, don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes. Well, we don't know exactly who said that. It's been used in war many, many times. But apparently it was said here at this particular battle, and this battle is attributed to that particular phrase. Okay, um, How William Howe uh, gained fame through the French Indian War during the Battle of Quebec it's important to understand that he was sympathetic to Americans. He was loyal to the king, uh, but he opposed the king's heavy hand towards the Americans. Uh, he was the victor at Bunker Hill, uh, but later he lost the will to fight and the command went to Henry Clinton. Okay. Here's a picture of, uh, or a painting of Breed's Hill, the British frontal attack. Uh, ma major fighting at Bunker Hill was done at this particular site. The hill was only about 60 feet tall, okay? It's important to understand that the colonists still were looking for peace. So they have something called the Olive Branch Petition in July of 1775. Um, it was originally written by Thomas Jefferson, but he wrote the first draft and it was too inflammatory. So a man by John Dickinson sort of toned it down, wrote the second draft. In the Olive Branch Petition, the colonists declared that they were loyal to the king. Okay. Um, but in August of 1775, King George III declared that all colonies were in rebellion and that any sort of skirmish would be treason. Okay? In the next video, I'll talk about the two-pronged plan.